Hi everybody, Jack, RoadsterCycle.com with you again. Hey, a lot of people ask me about um, motorcycle charging systems, of course, because that's what I do a lot of. So I thought I did a little drawing behind me and I'm going to show you what is the difference between uh, a three-phase stator and a single-phase stator and your regulator, how that works, and tie it all together for everybody, okay? So basic, your basic motorcycle is 99% like I'm going to show you, which is a stator, a regulator, and a battery, okay? Nothing magic about it, guys, nothing. So here we go. So here's your three-phase stator, okay? And there's one coil, two coils, and three coils, and they're all hooked together and go to your regulator, okay? Like so. Okay, they go into the regulator, at this point they get turned into DC direct current to charge your battery, and then from there they go and feed your battery, okay? So in 99% of the cases, there's nothing else in your system, nothing, okay? There might be a wire coming off a of positive going someplace else that needs to be hot all the time, like maybe a fuse box, but in essence, Nothing turns the regulator on. It's passive. It's, it starts working as soon as your motor starts spinning, okay? So this is the three phase, okay? And a lot of times I ask you guys to unplug it here to be able to test your, you know, stock motorcycle regulators. Unplug it here and put a uh, multimeter between each lead, and we'll call this A, B, and C, okay? And I put... Uh, a and B together with your test leads from your multimeter to give you a uh, ohms reading and then A and B or A and C to put together to see what you get for an ohm reading and B and C to see what you get with an ohm reading. The other thing I do is have you take each one of these and make sure it doesn't go to ground. It does, should not have continuity to ground meaning if you have a multimeter that beeps, if you put the two ends together and it beeps it should not do that. If you touch one of these and go to ground, it should not continually beep. It might beep for a split second, like beep, but it can't beep continuously. If you touch any of these to ground, they should not do that, okay? So from there, we got that. We got an FHO 20AA MOSFET. This is a picture of an 847. There's a MOSFET series, and there's a, I'm sorry, there's a FHO 20AA MOSFET which is a shunting regulator, and there's an SH847 series, which is a series regulator. The difference is, is a shunting regulator, regulator, although these do have up-to-date technology, they have MOSFET regulator or MOSFET transistors in them, they work so much better than the 60s technology of the old days that are on still, you know, I would say 90% of the bikes out there have the old type of shunting regulator. This is the newer type, the 847 series, it is a type that is a little easier on your stator. It runs it a little cooler. And how it does that is that it shuts the stator on and off very, very quickly, okay, giving you the power to charge your battery and run your lights and everything like that. It does not care whether your headlights are on or off, whether you have LEDs or no LEDs, or if you're going racing and don't have any lights on your bike at all. It doesn't care. It'll work just fine. Okay, another thing we have is down here, another regulator, which comes on a lot of Hondas and a couple other bikes in the past. And what it is, is it's a regulator and has two wires coming out of it that end up going just to one wire. Because I have a lot of guys call me up and say, hey, my old, you know, regulator has got two wires on it, two reds and two greens, or two reds and two blacks, or two reds with white stripes and two greens, okay? Doesn't matter, okay? Because what happens is, at the factory, they put these two wires, like two grounds, that go a few inches from your regulator and turn back into one again. So it's just, they're just negative. The positive, same thing. A couple positive wires they put together to carry more current to get it into the motorcycle system, and then they go back to one wire and positive. And these are always hot. These go to straight to the battery, same as up here. This one's hot. It's hot all the time, okay? The other thing the bike might have, and some of the Hondas have a black wire that goes to the regulator, okay? On my new regulators, you don't need that wire, but on the old Hondas, and some of the Hondas and other bikes have this black wire that is what's called an excitation wire. So when you turn the key on, it tells the regulator, okay, you can start working now, 
okay? And that's very outdated now. We, we don't use that system anymore. 99, I don't think of any bike right now that uses that system now. But anyway, and a lot of guys ask me the same thing. Hey, I got two wires and two blacks. Oh, and I got another black wire that goes to my ignition. So if I take that wire off, my bike's not going to run or start. No, it doesn't power the ignition. The ignition gives it a sense to the regulator. So it's actually backwards from what most people think. And a three-phase stator, the same thing goes into it. Now, a single-phase stator over here has only got one coil in it. Okay, so one wire goes to one, and the other one goes to the other side for the stator input on a regulator. Uh, my regulators, you can use three wires or two wires to do it. Okay, it'll still work just great. Um, so this is single phase. A lot of guys get confused about this. So there's only one coil inside and does that. And I will take and show you in a minute. I'll cut, I'll cut a quick clip into this uh, video to show you what a stator in your motorcycle, what is happening inside your motorcycle. Because I have a bench test set up, so I'll be able to take and turn it on and show you what's actually happening. Most of the time, with your stators, there's a outside magnet that spins around it, which gives it the uh, collapsing feel to be able to make your AC power to go to your regulator that turns into DC. So that's what's happening. So that's what I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you one with that, that you can see the stator inside the rotor, and I'll fire up the rotor so you can see the rotor spinning around on the outside. And that's how your motorcycle works. So hopefully, that was a pretty easy description of how a motorcycle charging system works. They're real simple, they're not magic. You know, most of the time on a lot of bikes, the uh, connector, which is not in the regulator, sometimes there's some wires coming out with a connector here and another connector going to that. Hondas, this is, happens all the time that this connector burns up, okay? So a lot of times you just get rid of that connector, wire these direct, and you'll be back charging again. So that's a good thing to look for when, you know, if you have a charging problem, okay? So I'm going to shut off, and I'm going to take, and take a shot of this uh, bench test setup I have for you, just so you can see how things work. Okay, so here's my, this is up on my wall, so I can't get it down, but here is, try to get it better. Better some light in there for you. So that's your stator inside the outside magnet. That's a magnet on the outside. That's your stator on the inside. This is that stator is out of a Harley Davidson, and the rotor is also out of a Harley Davidson. And as you can see, if I can put in my finger right here, these are the magnets inside there. They're kind of darker than the steel inside. Hope that helps. So that's what it looks like. And what happens is, when you start your motor, that's what happens. It spins around the stator, giving, making the stator produce alternating current, and that is what goes to your battery. So thank you Nikola Tesla for that. So anyway, so that's how that works. Okay, with that, that's pretty much the end of the video. But you also must know that on motorcycles, they're not like cars. When a car comes to a stop, they have, instead of having a permanent magnet, like I showed you on my bench test, they have an electromagnet in their stator systems, which means that when they come to a stop, so the air conditioning and everything will keep blowing as hard as normal, they pump more juice into the electromagnet to make the stator put out more output to be able to run air conditioning in the blower motor and defrosters and all that stuff. But on motorcycles, 99% of them, it's not like that. It has to do with RPMs of your motorcycle. So if you're sitting at a stoplight, that's when your motorcycle is producing the least power. Okay. So when you're sitting there, it's it might be charging a little bit or it's probably running off the battery. Most bikes, for some reason, they run off the battery a little bit when you're stopping at a stop sign. But once you get the RPMs up and start going, the charging system comes up and is running full blast. Is you know, 
that that's what it does or puts out you know all the power it can and that's where a shunting regulator takes and shunts the extra to ground and then when the SH847 or a series regulator it's just turning your uh, stator on and off very very fast to get you the charging power you need. Which one is better than the other? It all depends. If it's a series regulator and you're having problems with burning up stators and you've had stator problems and they burn up, you should go with the series regulator. Or if you're racing full time, go with the series regulator because that way you unplug your headlights, it doesn't matter. If it's a street bike and you kept your light stock, incandescent lights, everything like that, the MOSFET regulator has been working great for a long time. I've got close to 12,000 units out there all over the world. I've had about four come back in all that time. So they, they've just been fantastic. But if you take and change all your lights to LEDs or you unplug your headlights going racing, you put a lot of stress on shunting regulators because they're trying to get rid of all that excess power. So if in the future you need a regulator and you're going to change your bike over to LEDs if you think you might go racing or that type of stuff, go with the SH847, a series regulator. The other regulator that's out there is the SH775, which is about a 26, 27 amp regulator on its best day. It's a low RPM regulator. It's uh, over eight, 9,000 RPMs. It starts to get flaky. So we've totally quit using that one and we only use it. SH847 now because it's so much better. It just rocks over the other ones. So anyway, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. hope it worked out for you. If you have any questions, you're more than welcome to comment questions on regulators. That's what I do. You can call me. I answer the phone. I call people back. All right. Have a great day. Be safe. Bye.